Today I'm going to show you how to convert your images to black and white and then take them to a whole new level using adjustment layers and luminosity masks, all in Photoshop. Hey everyone, I'm Josh Mills and thanks for stopping in and checking out this tutorial. Today we will be converting our images to black and white using the black and white adjustment layer. Then I will walk you through creating some simple luminosity masks. With those luminosity masks, we will create some levels adjustment layers to add some nice contrast to our black and white image. After that, I will show you how to add a curves adjustment layer to add a nice matte effect. And we will wrap it up by adding our own custom vignette using the solid color adjustment layer and blend modes. Now let's jump in and get started. So here we are in Photoshop, and first I want to show you that these techniques will work on a variety of images. So I've applied the same techniques to all three of these images so that you can see that they will work. As a bonus, when you're done, you may want to turn off the black and white layer because the other adjustment layers can create some very nice and interesting effects to the original color images. If you need images to follow along with or practice on, there's a link down in the description to a great resource for you to download free images for you to practice on. Okay, now that we've got our image opened up in Photoshop, let's add a black and white adjustment layer from the adjustment layers icon down here in the bottom of the layers panel. This will quickly give us a basic black and white conversion of our image. As you can see, it's basically just desaturating our original image for us but it's really not that dramatic or dynamic of a black and white image. So let's do something about that. Now I will show you how to make some simple luminosity mask for your image. Let me know down in the comments if this is your first time using luminosity mask or if you've used them before. First, we need to jump over to our channels panel. So if we go up here to the top of the layers panel, we'll see channels right next to it and we click on that and that brings us into our channels. Here you see we already have our basic channels by default, our RGB color channel, our red channel, our green channel, and our blue channel. Now all we need to do is create some new channels to make selections for our luminosity masks. Now we will make a selection of all the highlights in our images by simply holding the control key on Windows or command key on Mac and clicking on our RGB channel. As you can see from the marching ants on the screen, we have made a selection of the highlights in our images. Now we will make that selection a new channel by going down and clicking on this icon in the panel. As you can see, it has added our Alpha 1 channel. This Alpha 1 channel is actually going to contain more of the midtones than we will want to adjust. So now we're going to make a selection of even brighter highlights. To do this, we're going to press and hold Alt, Control, Shift on Windows or Option, Command, Shift on Mac and then click on our new alpha layer. As you can see, the marching ants have shrunk, so we are selecting only the brighter areas of highlights in this image now. So again, we will go over here and click on our new channel icon and you will see we now have Alpha 2. Let's go ahead and rename Alpha 2 Highlights because this will be the highlight selection we want to use for our luminosity mask. Now let's create our channels so we can make our shadows luminosity mask. First, we want to go back to our RGB channel. Then we want to deselect our existing selection by pressing Control and D on Windows or Command and D on Mac. Now we will press and hold Control on Windows or Command on Mac and click on our RGB layer again. As you can see, this has selected our highlights again, but now we want our shadows, so we're going to invert our selection by pressing Control shift i on Windows or Command-Shift-I on a Mac. You will now see that your selection has been inverted because you will see the marching ants going around the outside edge of your frame. So now let's make that selection a new channel. Again, this channel contains too much of our midtones, so we're going to make a new selection of only the darker shadows to create our next channel. So let's go ahead and press Alt Control Shift on Windows or Option Command Shift on Mac 
And now we will click on our new Alpha 2 channel. As you can see, it now contains fewer of our midtones and only contains the darker shadows of our image. So let's go ahead and click the Add New Channel and create that. Here, the selection still contains too much of our midtones and we only want the darkest of the dark. So again, let's press and hold Alt Control Shift on Windows or Option Command Shift on Mac and click our Alpha 2 channel again. Now we have only the darkest shadows in our image selected. So let's go ahead and make another channel. I'm happy with this selection of shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this last channel shadows because it will be the channel that we use to make our luminosity mask for the shadows. Okay, so we have our highlights and our shadows channels created. Let's go ahead and use them to make our luminosity masks. First, let's go ahead and click back on our RGB channel. If you still have the marching ants, then you still have your shadows selected. If you don't, all you need to do is go over and press and hold Control on Windows or Command on Mac and click on your shadows channel and it will make the selection again for you. Now let's go back to our layers panel. With this selection still active, let's go ahead and add a levels adjustment layer so we can start adding some dramatic effects to our image. So let's go down to the adjustment layers icon at the bottom of the layers panel and let's go up and add a levels adjustment. As you can see, it has created a new levels adjustment layer and applied our shadows luminosity mask from that shadows channel. So let's rename this shadows. And now let's darken those shadows by coming up here to our properties panel and grabbing the slider on the shadow end and bringing it right to darken the shadows in the image. For this image, 25 looks about right for me. You can toggle the visibility of the layer on and off to see how it has affected your image so far. Now let's make our highlights pop by doing the same thing with a new levels adjustment layer. First, we will need to go back over to our channels panel. We will go down to our highlights and while pressing and holding the control on a Windows or command on a Mac, we will click on the highlights channel. As you can see, it has made our selection from that channel for us again. So we will go back over to our layers panel. Then we will go down to the adjustment layers icon and we will add another levels. As you can see, it has created a new levels adjustment layer, this time applying our highlights luminosity mask. So let's go ahead and change the name of this layer to highlights. Now to make the highlights pop, we will go up to the properties of the layer. And this time we will grab the highlight slider and move it to the left to increase the brightness of the highlights in the image. Here, around 215 to 220 looks good for this image. Again, you can come down here and toggle the visibility of the layer on and off to see how it is affecting your image. Since we've already created multiple adjustment layers, let's go ahead and group them together so that we can toggle them on and off at the same time to see how it is affecting our basic black and white conversion. So while pressing and holding the control or command key, let's select our other layer and then come down here and click on the group icon in the bottom of the layers panel. This will create a new group with our two levels adjustments with luminosity masks that we have already created. Now, if we toggle the group on and off, you can see how much this has already affected our original black and white conversion. Now that we've added some nice contrast to our black and white conversion using levels adjustment layers and luminosity masks, Let's take it up another notch by adding a curves adjustment layer and making a nice matte effect. Okay, to add that matte effect, we're gonna go back down here to our adjustment layers icon. And this time where you're going to choose curves. This will create a new curves adjustment layer for us and we're gonna use it to make that matte. So let's go ahead and rename it matte. To create the effect, all we need to do is go up here to the curves properties and add a few points. First, let's add an anchor point right in the middle of our graph. 
we will add a second anchor point down here in the lower left end of the line. I usually find that with an input of 45 to 50 and an output of 45 to 50 is a good spot. The reason for these points is to keep what we're about to do from affecting our highlights and upper midtones. Now to create the matte effect, all we need to do is come down here to the black point, grab it, and pull it up the wall. The higher you go, the more matte the effect will appear. Here I'm pretty happy with the 35 range. Now you can go down and toggle the visibility of your new curves layer on and off to see how it is affecting your image. As you can see, I've added a really nice matte effect to my image. We can also toggle our group visibility on and off and see how all of our adjustment layers have now affected our original black and white conversion. Okay, I think we need to add one more effect to finish this image off. Let's go ahead and draw our viewer's eye into our subject by creating our own custom vignette. We're going to do that by adding a solid color adjustment layer and then using blend modes. To make our own custom shape vignette, all we need to do first is make our selection. So let's grab our lasso tool over here from the tools panel, and then we're going to make a selection in our image. Here I'm going to draw into the areas that I want the vignette to affect. keeping a nice distance from my subject so that my vignette will not affect her. Anywhere you go outside of the frame, you will not have any vignette affecting. So as you can see, I'm going in and out and creating areas that I want this vignette to happen. Now we will invert our selection by pressing Control Shift I on Windows or Command Shift I on Mac. As you can see, our selection has now inverted. And with that selection, let's go add a solid color adjustment layer from the adjustment layers panel. So at the very top, you see solid color. We will select that. It will automatically apply whatever color you have set as your foreground color. But here we simply want true black. So we can just drag this down to the bottom corner or you can type six zeros right over here. Once we have black selected, we will hit OK. As you can see, this now has created black shapes around our subject where our selection was. Now let's turn it into a vignette by adding a blur. We will go up to the filter menu at the top of Photoshop. We will go down to blur and then over to Gaussian blur. If you get this error, the reason is you actually do not have the layer mask selected, which is what we actually want to be blurring. So simply hit cancel, go over to your layers panel and select the layers mask on your color fill layer. Then go back to the filter menu, go to blur and select Gaussian blur. Here, the radius size will depend on how large the image is that you're working on. Here you wanna choose a radius that creates the softness of the fall off for your gradient that you like. As you increase the number, the gradient will get softer. Here I'm happy with that 700 to 750 range to create a really nice soft fall off of my gradient. Once you're happy, click OK on the Gaussian Blur. As you can see, we've created this really nice vignette around our subject. But to blend it in even nicer, let's go over here and make sure that we still have our color fill layer selected and go up to our blend modes which you will see the normal right here is a drop down menu. We will click on it and let's go down to soft light. As you can see, that has now softened our vignette even more. We can go over here and toggle the visibility of that layer on and off to see how that vignette is affecting it. And if you feel like the effect is too strong, you can also go up and lower the opacity of that layer. Once you're happy, let's go over and toggle the visibility of our group on and off and see how much we've really brought up this black and white image. All right, we've taken our color image, turned it black and white, then took it up to a new level using some luminosity mask and some adjustment layers. Tell me if you're gonna use any or all of these techniques on your black and white images in the future down in the comments. 
If you found this helpful, make sure to check out some of my other tutorials and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.